this finally, a, that, that's happening. Yeah, right? this is a, we're actually trying to do a podcast. We're actually going to try and do a podcast. So I'd say, let's just introduce ourselves. Yeah. Okay, so you go first, I'd say. Don't, don't you want to go first because it's uh, your place? So. Okay, so um, I'm uh, Andrea Olivo. Uh, we here at Arcade Studio, which is my photo studio here in Milan. Uh, I'm a photographer, and um, basically the plan is uh, just to be here and have a bit of a chat. Um, this is my brother, Rene, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I, we're going to try and um, host these things together, I'd say, with many guests. But to start off with, I think it's a good thing that everybody just sort of figures out who we are. and um, So we can also figure out who so, we are. Exactly, so we can figure out where we want to go with this. So, as Joe Rogan says, I must talk into the mic, otherwise no one's going to hear. So, go for it, your turn. Yeah. So, um, I'm René Olivo. So, I'm a creative manager for Viacom uh, International. And um, I take care of all the promotion for the um, Swimea cluster, which is a South, Western Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Mm -hmm. um, been doing this for about a year and a half. Been with them for nearly 11 years now. I started out as a freelance editor, you know, just like going on um, on a wing, just like yeah. learning by myself and stuff. And your main clients? My right. main clients, I'm a, I'm a um, internal creative for Viacom. Yeah, but like you, Viacom in Italy and in the area, they do MTV, they do, what else do they do? Yeah, I'm, uh, I take care of the... Um, Youth and music brands, which is VH1 and MTV. There you go. Yeah. So okay. it's, um, it's a lot of, uh, like sometimes I do a little bit of editing for the mock-ups, but it's mainly like campaign proposals, day-to-day -day operations, like, you know, seeing, like trying to coach the, uh, the other editors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then just being um, a connection between the channel and and the creative department, pretty right. much. Yeah, you just bring in the, the party line from the, the company yeah. through to the creatives that you're going to be working with all the time. Coming up with your own things in the middle, but making, you know, basically internal so you keep the di art direction. Yeah, like uh, we normally, um, we actually do a lot of the art direction like in-house, mm -hmm. and then we outsource the production. Um, it depends on the project, but, um, you know, a lot of times... A lot of the times we will be doing the, we, we still got to use all the volumes and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. How to move in the space. Yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of the times we do the actual creative work and then try to have others make what we have in mind, which is oh, right. like which mission. Is, which is the cool thing about the job though, because yeah. it's really quite boring just like tell other people what to do rather than doing it yourself. Yeah, and so it's just like you're in purgatory all the time. Yeah, 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 of like, course. Because you're in the middle of the client and the creatives all yeah. the time. And then a lot of the times you get to a certain point with a creative, uh, like a creative campaign, and then you have to leave space for the the editor or the mm -hmm. graphic designer. Yeah, of course. Because everybody but you've already gone so far, and it's hard for them to then like take something that's been so like thought out. Yeah, and really actually has do a something. Yeah, but you so. didn't always do art direction. You've come I'm not from, even doing it like now. Yeah, technically, exactly. You've come from a. You've had a very strange. Uh, inception into this world because yeah. we we grew up in South Africa yeah in a tiny little town middle of nowhere Southport represent yeah Southport fantastic little place it's good for holidays if you guys want to go there not great to grow up I'd mm. say maybe a little oh, bit oh yeah too. it depends I mean yeah. like, uh, it, it, like winter was pretty shitty but I mean, yeah. uh, I mean it's like it's summer, a seasonal it's yeah a seasonal you're on the place. beach so you're surfing and doing whatever you want to yeah. do but it's like it's just a small sleepy sort of town and then at one point, you started skating? I uh, started skating when I was 14. Uh, it was around 97, 98. Um, as soon as I started skateboarding, I just, like every other sport went out the window. Like I just yeah. wanted to skate and like gradually just uh, stopped doing cricket, stopped doing hockey, all the, the very masculine sports that yeah, I was allowed yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and um, I've always been like a pretty sporty person, but as soon as I like started skating, I was like, okay. That's this it. is what I want to do. And my grades went down. Yeah, your grades are always down. Yeah, they, they went down. They were actually like, okay. I was yeah. like a B student. Everybody's B student. a B student when they're yeah. 13, dude. <laughs> well, I mean, 
<laughs> I was like uh, a pretty good B student. Okay. And then, so that basically we would come to Italy every now and again for holidays. Yeah. Uh, until uh, we decided, well, the family decided to move back yeah. to Milan because our mom's from Milan. Yeah, exactly. So she wanted to come back here. So we decided, okay, this is it. I was studying photography in South Africa yeah. at the time. And you stayed a year. I stayed a year longer year. because I had to finish off that stuff. And you came over and you started then getting into the local scene here. Yeah, like the, as soon, like I really knew that um, Milan had a, a train station spot, like a really good spot. And um, I, it was like, when was it? It was like um, the first, maybe the second time I went to Italy mm -hmm. on holiday. I went past um, the train station. I saw people skating. I, I hadn't started skating yet. So right. I just remembered that. And then... Um, just checking online, I found like a, a website called Skate Map, and I was looking at the. It was like one of the main spots was the train station in Milan, uh, Milano right. Centrale. So when I moved, um, like the first day, I went like from the airport to my cousin's house, our cousin's house, and then you know say hi to everyone, and then I just went straight to the train station, and I wanted I wanted to skate, but the problem is that they lost my my bag. Right, with your board. Yeah. No, I had my board, but I didn't have any shoes. All right. So the only pair of shoes I had was our uncle's shoes. It was like uh, three sizes too big. All right. I was like, okay, I'm just going to put these on <laughs> and go and skate the train station. And I, j I did that. It was like the, one of the craziest things. But I got there and I asked permission to the locals because I used to like think about like all the locals. Yeah, but we, because we also grew up in a spot where all the surfers used to be very localist as well, you know, you had yeah. the tweeny locals and whatnot, so they, you had to sort of get their respect before you could get in the water to surf certain waves. Not all the spots, but some of them were like that. Yeah, it's like you had to respect, like also not drop in and... Yeah, you know. so we just, you know, and, and we were brought up uh, quite polite, so... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is a problem because... Um, Everything we do is always about being polite and being nice to people, I think. You know, just generally, you think about yeah. people's feelings when we do things. And being creatives, you can't usually do mm. that. It's, 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 well, it, we have different ways of going about that, though. Yeah, it's a bit of a like, handicap. You're a bit of a handicap. <laughs> okay, no. Uh, no, I mean, like, you are much more um, uh, direct, I guess. Like, I'm a bit more, um, I tend to avoid, like, confrontation a lot of the time. So I use other methods, like, yeah. try, it doesn't always work. Um, but maybe the, I've learned that from dealing with like the, like the druggies in the train station. Oh, right. Yeah. Cause you have to like be, you know, you're skating a ledge and like they're coming through with like the syringes, like, ah, like give me your board or whatever. And then, um, you have to like kind of deal with them in a, like a diplomatic way without like, you know, beating them over the head with your board. And I guess like you, you went straight into, uh, like work mode. Yeah. I came up yeah. from, well, I was already working. As, a, as like an assistant and a bit as a photographer in South Africa when I was studying. And so I was like always working all the way through um, high varsity. And then when I came here, I went straight into assisting. And there I was, oh, yeah. you know, they taught me very quickly that you can't say please and thank you too often because you just don't get what you need. You know, if you need to do the shot in front of a store window, you get the shot and then ask, say sorry if um, somebody gets annoyed. Or, you yeah. know. But the important thing is to just get it done. And for me, every single time I do it, I feel like a thief. <laughs> I feel like re a real, yeah, like, like terrible. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, and, you know, I know people that just don't give a shit. They just do it, you know. Well, what was that? Like a oh, that's my next-door neighbors. Our next-door neighbors, they make... Um, like uh, panzerotti, which for those of you that don't know panzerotti, it's a it's like pasta from a pizza, and it's um, fried as well. It's, yeah, yeah, you put it. It's like a pizza which is like folded onto each other, like a calzone, and then it's deep fried. It's fantastic. Lovely. Yeah, awesome. It's a down south, down south type stuff. Right. So you came into Milan and you. Um, you, you went and skated with your shoes that were too big, and that started off a whole different thing for you because that started off um, like like I said before, I just wanted to skate. So I had like six months before, like I had to learn how to, how Italian schooling was. Right. I finished my, my my high school in South Africa, so I did eighteen years. Finished my high school, and I was like, okay, now we got to. I got. I didn't know what to do. Like um, right. like. One of the things that I didn't enjoy about, well, not that I didn't enjoy, but one of the things that they, I didn't, 
I wasn't prepared for in mm. high school. It was that they didn't tell you what kind of um, like sector or what kind of job you could do with what you like doing. Right. Yeah. Because they, 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 I mean, nobody knows. Yeah. But I mean, no? like in a lot of places they say, okay, like in, in Italy, you really start hearing about like directing. Yeah. A little bit more. Like, yeah. But I mean, back in the day, like the only thing I ever heard was some other student talking about graphic design. I was like, yeah. I like drawing cartoons. I'm going to do graphic design. And I had right. no idea what it was. Um, so when I came here, I had like um, six months before the first like experimental course right. happened. So I was just skating the whole time. And I was like, okay, uh, graphic design is going to start in six months. And uh, I can just skate all day. Fantastic. So, and just... I stay with my cousins and just like, you know, try and meet people Yeah, and, and try to get the language uh, down. Exactly. Which, I mean, we both all, we spoke Italian at home, but obviously you're only with speaking the, with mom and dad and you could use English whenever you needed to. Yeah. So when we got here, one of the tough things was actually just updating our Italian to what it is in Italy in 2003, rather than Italy 1969, which is when our parents left. Yeah. And not only the slang, it's also like, we were speaking yeah, Italian obvious. with like a heavy English accent. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. it still happens. Oh well. yeah, of course. Now, now I'm speaking to English with a with an Italian accent. I can hear it sometimes. No, it's South African. <laughs> it's South African. <laughs> yes, it is. No, but definitely. But I can hear it sometimes. There's like it's not the accent. It's the way I, I construct sentences, which oh, is yeah. sometimes a little bit of a mess. But by the time you know, after a while, I warm up and it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like we're not used to speaking English. No, well we don't. Like, we, I've changed my English as well. Yeah, like, because. Uh, just it, it, depending on who you speak to, because like in like obviously in South Africa, you keep on meeting South Africans, so you speak with yeah, the, of course. Like, slang, obviously, like wherever you go. But um, when I started like meeting people coming through the st like skateboarders or whoever just came through, there would be like Swiss people that spoke English, uh, Germans, uh, Americans, Canadians, and no one understood like yeah. the South African accent. So I had to like start switching and like do my R's. Yeah, 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 of course. And it's also, crazy. like, you know, we don't, we are the only country that has robots that don't kill people. Oh, exactly. We and have, uh, that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> the robots are traffic lights in South Africa. Yeah. Well, <laughs> for those who don't know, tra traffic lights are always robots. Oh, well, but not te all, technically. But not all robots are traffic lights. Exactly. No? Okay. Every robot could be a traffic light, though. Of course. <laughs> exactly. If it really wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, right, so you got. Um, it started yeah, these six months you got into graphic design you did how long was that course that course was one year and I it took me about like one day probably to understand that it wasn't for me right so you just got through it yeah I was always like you know, I didn't really just get through it I mean the course is one like just a kind of dodgy dodgy course you know just right. to like just to get into the whole schooling and university system to see if I could actually like do a test or understand or listen or yeah. whatever but um i understood straight away that uh well actually not like one day like at, at the end of the year i was like okay this really isn't for me because they sent us to like the cool thing about the course was at the end of the year they sent you to do work experience right. and it, depending on how like um into it you were and and like how much you um, uh were working hard during the course they would give you like a better place a better place mm -hmm. uh, to work and this really cool um, print graphic design mm -hmm. guy uh, asked me to to go to work for them as a as an apprentice, and uh, it was called Franco Guf uh, Franco Gaffuri Studio. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, and he was really cool because, like, you know, I I like jumped straight into like a place where they were doing uh, like prize winning stuff, and yeah. he, he came from like the '60s, so he was like. Yeah, he did some really good stuff. He did really cool mm -hmm. stuff, and he, he still does some stuff. And it was right by the stu the, the the school, right? So, Which is right by our house. Yeah, it was like super cool. Everything was perfect, and they paid me. Yeah, straight away. Straight away. So I was Which was good for a couple of South Africans that were coming up. That with, was we, we the rand is, is shitty now, but it was shitty back then as yeah. well. And so we we basically came up with like zero cash. Yeah, and th and then I and mean, like I was getting paid more than then like apprenticeship like yeah. internships are getting like like now it's crazy like no one really gets paid and when you get paid it's like maybe 300 bucks i was getting 400 bucks a month yeah yeah which is great for a student which is great for someone who knows nothing about what he's doing and yeah i was just like i was doing um 
some like concept work and then I would just you know try to like with the um, with a scalpel try and do like little mock-ups and cut pages and I'll, I'm like really because you this was like half of it was on computers or half none of, and then the other half was actual still old school mock-ups and yeah that kind of stuff. and there's like um like one of the um, the graphic designers was actually like a product packaging designer and she oh, would right. do stuff with like with paper and I was like whoa, whoa, whoa you know this is crazy oh, this is awesome I mean you, that's like a dinosaur basically yeah which is like it's so cool to see yeah it was really cool yeah. and then, um, like the, the main graphic designer was like really cool and he would like always help me out and, mm -mm -mm. and like Franco Gafuri like the, the, the owner the actual graphic designer was uh, like like pretty he was really cool but he was like hard as well so he wouldn't let you like slip Mm -hmm. You know, so it was, really, it was a good way to get straight into like work. That's yeah. awesome. And that was like my first real work experience. And they kept me on like it was supposed to be one month of work experience just for the um, for the course, and they kept me six months. Okay, so, yeah. so that was a good start to everything. That was a good start. And in the meantime, you were just skating, I like just, every free t free moment that you yeah. had, and were you already making videos? Um, I wasn't already making videos. That was the first year I didn't have a computer yet. Right. I got it shortly after, like my, my first paychecks. I got a computer, but I didn't know much about editing. Like I think I, I always wanted to do it. I didn't know how. Like I had no like no way of knowing it. Like I I didn't know. It was just weird. I, I wanted to do videos, but I didn't know how. And yeah. I think like the first stuff, the first things I was doing was. Um, like VCR to VCR. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I didn't even have a camera, so it was just like it was something there. And then what happened, like I saw uh, a skate video premiere, like an Italian video. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I didn't know at the time, but it, like I figured out afterwards there was like a really big one. It All was right. like um, uh, the brand is called, it's still like now, it still exists. It's called uh, Spaghetto Child. All oh, right. And it was their second video. And I was like, I met all these guys in Milan at the train station. They're like, oh, we're having a premiere. And I went to the premiere. I was like, oh, shit, you know, that, that was really cool. And like all the people that I met, I thought they were like pros and stuff. They're just like, like yeah. normal, normal guys. And then after that, I was like, okay, this guy knows how to edit. And I started like getting to know him and I asked him a couple of questions. And it was like really cool. And he was like, yeah, I use Premiere. I uh, use this to capture what? Premiere. I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, what's that? And then um, from there, I started like, like I, I think I don't downloaded like a like a cracked version of I can't remember like I found the version. Supposed to say that. We're not supposed to say that. I was young and stupid. But I think Adobe does it on purpose to make them easy to crack. Yeah, I, I think they make the crack themselves. You think so? Yeah, I think it could be. But I buy all my software. So we can cut this out. No, I'm actually like I actually pay pay I, for it now. I actually do pay for it, so it's okay. <laughs> okay. We're fine. We're good. <laughs> audition is is paid. For. Yeah, audition is paid for. It definitely looks like. It's working well as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, basically from there I started like um, like filming. Like a a around that time as well, um, I, I started filming for the first time. Like, um, yeah, like, like one of my your best parts. Friends. Yeah, but not even my parts. Like um, one of the main guys at the train station just gave like one day we were skating there. We were, it was just us. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, I need to film something. Can you film? Oh, like, right. Oh, okay. Okay. So you actually film me, not like yeah, me, film. like me filming yeah, yeah, yeah. someone else. And uh, I filmed it like, like I guess beginner's luck. I filmed it perfectly, <laughs> and we got like three or four clips that day. And he was like, "Okay, cool. This guy can film. Let's film each other." And I was like, "Diego, like, a, like my good friend, and uh, we're still friends today. We like did a whole project together, and we're always doing stuff together." But it started off from then. I was like, "Okay, like, I think I started editing." at his house because he had like a computer and stuff yeah. and well that's that's how it works yeah. you gotta have the, the friend of the computer mm -mm. Yeah. and with the camera <coughs> and uh yeah and then i just started like the next year i did a, there was another course at the same place yeah and that was more like um they called it it was like an experimental course and they called it uh, regista multimediale which okay. is like um multimedia, multimedia director yeah and what they basically did was teach you the basics for everything, like Photoshop, um, HTML, Premiere. But I would just be doing stuff on Premiere because everything else I, I kind of already knew. Yeah, because you, done, you had Photoshop on, on our Yeah, computer. I had a Photoshop on my PC back and like in the a, day. And I think I also had like another program called Photo something. It was... Um, 
Paint Shop Pro. Paint, yeah, Paint Shop Pro. Paint Shop Pro 5. And I used to do, I got into animation because I was doing animation first. Yeah. And I was doing like a frame by frame animations with my, with my buddy. You see, you're interested in all these different things. I would just try to take pictures of girls. Yeah, I know. I think it's like, yeah, you also do stuff that gives you more money, maybe. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. It gives you a lot more stress, I think. Yeah. But um, I don't know. You, you, you just seem to be able to like go from like one thing to another, to another, to another, to another, which is something that I don't have. Like, I mean, I'm interested in a lot of things, but I'm not that, I'm not interested enough to spend time on it. Uh, I have a lot of time to spare. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm just interested in a lot of, like, I, it got more and more as I got a lot uh, older. Yeah. Like now I'm really interested. Like I was interested in doing this podcast. Like when you pitched it, I was like, okay, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah. Because when I, I mean, you got me onto podcasts. I was really looking at long form, um, like interviews and that kind of stuff. I was like really into Christopher Hitchens and all those four horsemen things, like Richard yeah. Dawkins and Sam Harris and all that kind of stuff. So I was watching all these debates and things like that. And then you, one day you were like, dude, you should just check out these podcasts. And you got me onto Joe Rogan. And, uh, well, I think that was the main one. That was the main one. Yeah. So I started listening to that and then that opens up a whole rabbit hole of, mm -mm. of a disaster, which is, I mean, it's fantastic because basically I don't, you know, when I'm retouching rather than listening to music, I just put this thing on and I sort of try to educate myself on things rather than just mm -hmm. listening to some nice music, which I mean, is cool, but I've now, now music is for fun. And when yeah. I work and I'm concentrated on retouching or like production or whatever I do, which is on set, then I've got somebody talking in the background, which is a bit of white noise, but every now and again, it just like clicks in and wakes yeah, you yeah. up. It's like, oh, that's cool. And then maybe you like, then, then you waste like two hours of, of the day that you should be retouching and looking at, you know, why people think the earth is flat or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like super interesting because, excuse me, like in the end, like I'm really into... Like I figured this out afterwards, like in the last few years, like I'm really into storytelling. Yeah. So if someone like is just like, I would wonder like, why is this guy like so interesting to me? Like even friends or people you meet and I'll just like sit there and like, like come on, keep talking, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm being entertained. I just like love the way stories get told and like podcasts are perfect for that. Yeah, because yeah. it's long. You got like three hours, exactly. You know, or whatever it is. So when Instagram TV popped up a week ago, yeah, we we're like, oh shit! I was like, <laughs> dude, this is a chance because I mean, going on and doing another podcast, uh, maybe it's not like I mean, it'll be fun for us, but maybe nobody sees it. Whereas Instagram TV, nobody's seen it yet. Yeah, it's pretty new. So it's brand new. So we're gonna try and see if this works there. Yeah, I mean, with vertical cameras and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and the uh, beautiful neon light. <laughs> oh well, you know, I put it up myself. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool, actually. Luckily, my my wife's an architect, and she knows how to like measure these things out perfectly. Because I would, it would be all skew if it was for me. But did you actually like? Did you twist them, or did you just like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them? I twisted things, and uh, like, well, you, you have to trace it out onto paper, and then we had a big like banner here of the paper with this thing out, and then we made <laughs> holes in the wall, and uh, I don't know. Then you just like screw it in and hope for the best. <laughs> well, you should actually talk about a, a bit about this space. Well, I mean, the space is the space is is like the smallest thing about it at the moment. Like um, the, the dream, I think, was to take pictures for a living. Mm. Well, it was actually to travel. Like my life dream was to travel. That's all I was interested in. Because you wanted to be a pilot. Well, like back in the day, day, I wanted to be a pilot. But I think the, the 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 underlying theme is get around the world and see as much as you can on somebody else's dime. Right, so when I couldn't be a pilot because we had no money, and uh, so pri doing it privately was going to be a nightmare, mm -hmm. and um, the army or the air force was out of the question because I'm like too fat and I wear sun uh, I wear glasses, so that was you know military was not the way to go for it. And then it was in South Africa in '94, which would have been a bit harder for some people to get into the Air Force. So, but anyway, so we didn't do that. And it's like, what else can we do? And I came to Italy after my after high school. I came here for a year, not knowing what to do at all. So, but I just travel around. I had a little point and shoot camera, and I was just taking pictures. And then I was like, oh, this is, this is something. This is something that I actually enjoy doing. It's like I was never passionate about photography. Like I, I liked looking through a camera. 
because dad had a camera, yeah, like an like, old Rico. Yeah. And I would like take it and I would like spend time just looking through it. And I, I love the way that the, the focus little screen would just split the image up and we mm. put it together again. And it's like, oh, this is focus. And then you had the exposure and the, the little, it had a needle and a ring and you had to get the needle and the ring in the center to get the exposure right. And working out, you know, like shutter speed has to be high. Otherwise it's going to be blurry and the aperture, if the aperture is too wide, it's going to be, if the field's going to be too low, or whatever. So I would, I was working that out when I was like thirteen or fourteen or whatever. But just like a, just for fun, just, for fun. just because I'm a nerd, and it's like it was, it yeah, happen. exactly. I don't, it's a toy, so it's like I was like trying to figure it out, and like okay, now I figured it out, and then I realized okay, taking pictures is actually quite fun, and um, I got back to South Africa in, I'd say, early '99, must have been, yeah. And then we, I hung out at home, and more or less what you did as well, you know, like just like I had nothing to do. I would work as a waiter, and then I would, uh, I signed up for Technicon, which is like a polytechnic here in Italy. And a technical school. Yeah, a technical school, but it's, it's more than a technical school because you come out with a BA. Oh, okay. So it's like it's like a it's like a technical it's like a polytechnical. So you it's like a technical college, but it's also at the same time a, like a university. And so we went there, and the first day I got to the course, and they put us in a dark room, and that was it. I was in love. But it's 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 the toys. It's it's a technique of what it is to make an image that was interesting to me. Then then I. I I managed to figure out, I mean, once you learn all the rules, then taking a decent image is really simple. You know? I mean, it's like all like yeah. breaking the rules. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like lots of people, when they start out, they don't want to follow the rules. Mm. So they would like bring in like out of focus images and they would just like, you know, well, nothing really interesting. It was just like just pictures because they, they were like shooting from their heart or whatever. But like I was like really concentrating on getting everything technically very good in these first three years and getting I was printing in black and white and I was printing in color and you know whatever and then only once I started shooting for myself like just free of the school and free of all the projects and everything that we had because it was a technical school so they wanted you to be a professional when you yeah. came out of that school they didn't want you to be an artist they wanted you to be be able to be to, an to be able to go to any like uh, e-commerce sort of thing there wasn't e-commerce at the time but like any like uh, you know pack, pack shot commercial studio and get a job the next day because you knew how to load packs of four or five film or whatever so mm -hmm. that, that, that was the idea of that school it wasn't to make you creative and then um but in the meantime i was educating myself and i was looking at books and i was understanding which type of photography i wanted to do so it was like either lifestyle or fashion and then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to Milan, so I might as well concentrate on fashion. And that's it. We came to Milan. But why, uh, why fashion? Like, why did you choose fashion rather than, like, sports? Or? Well, because sport didn't interest me. Like, I'm not, I wasn't interested in, um, in taking pictures of football players or, like, rugby players or something like that with a long lens. And it's like, I, I still wanted to make images. And I mean, I'm not knocking that. I mean, like, those guys are amazing and they, 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 they capture moments. But for me, photography is more of like creating something. It's like coming up with an idea, like telling a story. Like that, that's something that's important for me as well. Like trying to bring out a piece of myself and putting it onto like a single image, right? And so it was just like no point in like doing like technical things or reportage. I wasn't interested in like seeing uh, like dead kids or like poverty or whatever. Well, I, I, I want to protest. If stuff. I'm going to travel, I want to travel first class. That was the idea. <laughs> Unfortunately, the economy was gone the downturn. But when I came to Italy, then I, I got into assisting and that got me to travel, which was fantastic because I managed to like get around quite a bit. And you had to start from scratch pretty much because you were doing already photography. Yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I was starting off working with a studio in South Africa that did a lot of like technical things. And uh, so, it was, I mean, there was lots of opportunity in South Africa. It just wasn't very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved over here, like the, the idea was, okay, now I'm going to work with the best guys I can personally work with and learn from them as much as possible and then try and get, like, I was like, before I'm 30, 
I want to take pictures for myself. I don't want to have my first clients and whatever. So you had like a, an objective. I had I had a, like a series of five year plans, <laughs> like sort of like I had it break broken down. I was like, okay, this is it. I'm going to get to 25, and I'll be like working really well as an assistant and earning my own money. And by 30, I want to be working as a photographer. And back in the day, this was 2000. I was 30 in 2010. There wasn't Instagram, and there wasn't all you know. Digital had just started when I was starting out, and everybody was still shooting on film. And a 30-year-old photographer was actually very young. So, like, it was a good like I was pushing myself to be 30 and, and doing my own jobs, working for it's big like, clients. Oh, should he really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like now, you're like a oh, 30-year-old photographer. You're already like super old. But back in the day, it was like that. You just didn't get jobs if you weren't like 34, 35. Unless you were like super, super amazing and you were living in New York and th then it was okay. But like for a guy that's coming from South Africa with like no cash and no, no connections and no nothing, like 30 was a really good target. And when I got, I was like on 30, I got into my agency, which is Aura Photo, and I got my first jobs. And it was like, I was stoked. And you're still with them now. And I'm still with them now after, I am 38 now, so eight years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was good. It was, it was. Um, I mean, I got lots of little lucky breaks along the way, which you need them. But uh, I had a good time. No, but I think like the the lucky breaks also come from yeah, like how much work you put in. As you put well. yourself in the position to get the lucky breaks, but you still need the lucky breaks. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, lucky breaks come sometimes without you even putting yourself in any position. They just happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, can happen <laughs> so, as well. well so then now it's like the, the position where I'm in now is that um, I've worked for now eight years, like, f like fully only photography, and um, I've gotten to a point where I needed a studio. I needed a place where I could shoot my own things and just like be free and like, you know, just also to do the next step as far as, you know, what I can offer to my clients and what mm -hmm. I can offer to like other people. So this spot opened up in October last year. And I'd been walking past these windows for years because I lived just down the road here. And I would always look in these windows and be like, oh, these are really nice. This, this is like beautiful looking studio. I'm sure something like cool would happen in there. And my, my next door neighbor at the time, he was also looking for a spot. So I was like, dude, let's just see how much this place come, comes to. So we came in, checked it out, and it was the price was right. So we popped in. And now it's ours, and basically it's just like a studio location. I mean, it's low, low ceilings. It's not perfect. There's no air conditioning, as you can see, from yeah, this right. beating sweat. But um, that'll come slowly. And the idea is just to like have it for me to shoot in and for anybody else who wants to come and play. Because in Milan, and I think pretty much anywhere studios are always like a conglomerate of studios you have like four or five spots like studios in the same spot where you know you'd go and work and there would be like one photographer and another photographer and another photographer and then everybody at lunchtime would be like looking at each other over their shoulders like right. who's talking to who and what and, you know so and then they're all on the other side of the t city for me from because i live in north milan so for me to go from north to south milan to work in the studios which are all like the fashion studios the cool ones it took me like an hour and I was just like, fuck it, I don't want to do like an hour's trip just to go and take pictures. Trip. I want to just like wake up at the last minute, walk into my studio, you know, and just be at home. So, and I, I'm sure that, I mean, there are plenty of photographers that live in Northern Milan, which would like to do that same thing. So then I said, okay, cool, let's do a rental studio, which is ex exclusive to whoever wants to work here. And they have the run of the place. I'm not here when somebody else is here. So... It's theirs for the day, you know, and you can do whatever you want here, you know, as long as you don't break it. Yeah. You know? So that's the idea between you know, the arcade. It's just like like an Airbnb studio. Yeah, it's like an Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's like this is this is like it's a spot which I've made comfortable enough for you to work in it, like, and be free. And then if you need extra things, I mean, we cut extra things, but I don't want to plug this place. I just want to, like, you know, whatever. It's a cool little spot to come yeah, and check it out. Little, like, uh, yeah, clubhouse. I mean, this is exactly, it's a clubhouse. It's exactly that. That's uh, exactly the a word. man cave. It's a man cave with lots of light. So that's the plan. It's like, I want, I want people to come in here and I want them just to like feel at home and just have fun and have a beer in the back. It's cool. And arcade because like you want people to play. Yeah, 
arcade because it's like a fun house. Yeah, pretty much. But then I just like the name, really. I think I stole it from a restaurant in Cape Town. I think. Or well, a bar different or something. Sectors, uh, yeah, 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 different. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But I mean, I, I walked past and it was like, oh, that sounds like fun. It's cool. So anyway, so back to you. You've done, you've gone through, you've done your, your second course and then you, you got placed there as well doing something um, after the second course. Yeah, maybe I can, yeah, I got uh, placed at the end of the year. I did, um, like, but no, actually what I wanted to say, like before, um, like when everyone else was doing like um, Photoshop courses or whatever, oh, right. we were on pretty much the same computer the whole time. Um, and I was busy editing the trailer of a video, a skate video I was working on. All right, okay. And um, so I was using that as a project, but I was already um, like pretty far ahead um, of the other guys at the course because like some people didn't even know how to open up Photoshop and yeah. layers and all that stuff. And with PaintShop Pro, I already knew like how animation was kind of working. And early PaintShop Pro. Early PaintShop Pro. And... Um, I had a friend who was also into it, and like so, we did a lot of that, and so all the basics were were, were really like solid. So I would do like what it was needed to be done in the lesson, and then just open up Premiere, and like the the teachers wouldn't say anything because they knew, yeah, like, they, okay, you're already ahead, just keep on doing whatever you want. And I was I edited the whole trailer during like the course, and I used it as my like my project or my thesis or whatever yeah. at the end of the year. And then um, we actually used that to promote the the full length video that came out like the like a year later, like maybe eight months or something. I can't remember exactly when it came out. And that was the first video, like skate video, I ever, ever edited. And I just like found out I was really into it. I was just like fun. It came easy, and um, and everyone else, like my whole group of friends, is like, okay, shit, Reno is the editor. He can edit and he can film. And, um, Which is like hitting gold in a skate uh, skating community. Not you know? in Italy. No, eh? no, no. But I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about like for a, for a group of skaters. For to, if to, you're to, not the filmer, yeah, yeah, to find somebody in your group that knows how to edit. It's like yeah, fantastic. It's like when you're at a a bry barbecue and somebody pulls out a guitar and they can play. Yeah, it's like, like dude, oh, okay. you can play. Cheers, thanks a lot. You just sit in a corner and just keep playing. Just, just keep playing. And we'll just. Yeah, yeah, but it's more like the guy who who brings the meat, I guess. Yeah, okay. like, or, know, or knows how to cook it because like we had like some friends who really knew how to film, but no one knew how to edit really. Right. And then, um, but obviously, I had to I had to learn. So I, I was like doing a lot of mistakes, and I, and just like there was no, I think YouTube just came out. Yeah, YouTube. It was like 2006 or 2007. Yeah, I was editing in 2004, 2005. So. It was just like a lot of websites that you just had to like run through and just hopefully find out. Like, I didn't even know I had to look for the word export or the word. Yeah, because you, AVI like you started from nothing basically. So just like a lot of mistakes and just like you kids today have it so yeah, easy. It's, it's like insane. And a lot of you suck. I don't know why. Yeah, but, but a lot of them are amazing. I mean, like that's the thing. That's like. You know, I, so I, wide, like the difference. Yeah, I mean, there, there are. I mean, obviously, people are going to be shit. Most most people are going to be shit. But when they're when they're good, they're fucking amazing, and they're like eighteen year old kids, and you're like, God damn it, you know? It's like, yeah, it's like, oh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, don't, it's not jealous. It's I don't just find like, it that, that amazing, though. No, but I mean, it's like I find it amazing that that they have that vision at that age. When, when, because it's not about just like putting things together, you know. It's actually like doing it. But I mean, the it's only, like the only thing that a lot of it is just like um, like copy and pasting. It's kind of copy and pasting. Like if you have a um, like YouTube or Vimeo or Behance or whatever, you have like such a wide selection of how to do things right. Yeah. So what you're saying is that the quality of a video, like the storyline of a video, is like what I was saying before, like taking a good picture. There's a there's a definite like alchemy good. to it. Yeah. Like if you put in this and this and this, you will get good. You will get like the standard. There's like a standard you can like. Yeah. And you and before it was hard to find people that could get that standard. Right. So now like a lot of like, more oh, people are hitting wow. the standard. You yeah. Say. It's like now the standard is like the low quality. 
Yeah. You know, so it's so much easier. To but that's find what them. I'm saying. Like when you when you get somebody that hits the high quality, yeah, like the well, really high quality, yeah. and they're like so so small, so young, then it's like oh my god, like that is like just pure talent. Yeah, yeah you no, know? definitely. Yeah. Because that that's I mean like I, I get it. Like it's super easy to like to edit now, and it's super easy to film. And the cameras, like I mean, the iPhones are like mm. bloody amazing just by themselves. But then all the other cameras are like super good as well. And you know now people are trying to make it hard for themselves, just going back to film and going back to Super 8 and going back to all that kind of stuff, which is just complicating it. From, but yeah, maybe it's just like to but, be. But it's good. Like I mean, it's good fun. It's exactly exactly because everything's so easy that they're trying to make it harder. And I think that I mean that that's the trend at the moment in photography, at least. Like everybody going back to is like a lot of people are going back to film. But I think it's about, it's it's more about the control of the photographer. When you're shooting on film, you have all the control because people can't be looking over your shoulder, going, uh, "Do the, oh, you know, let, let's, okay. ch- you know, uh, let's try it this way, let's try it that way." You're like, "No, guys, this is this is how I see this image. This is how it's going to be." Trust me. Yeah, trust me. And there we go on. It's not easy to do it for a commercial job because obviously you got like a, 30 people behind you, then and, and the clients are putting in a lot of money and they want to like see what's happening. They, like a Polaroid is not going to cut it. Yeah, Polaroid is not good enough because then everybody loves Polaroids and then nobody likes the picture at the end of the day because the Polaroids is always better than what you got in the film for some reason. But um, like on your editorials, which is where photographers invest money most of the time, especially for the, like, the nicer magazines, they never give you any cash for it. So you bring in all your money to yourself and then you got a stylist that you usually find because it's, it's, it's always a photographer comes up with a story. I, not always, but most of the time, photographers need to put a story together because they need to get the story out. And they put it together a team. And then the stylist comes on board. And stylists are usually like a bit controlling because that's what stylists do. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is good. I mean, you need that extra pair of eyes. But at the same time, they, they try to like they have a big say and when they can see exactly what's coming out on the, on the screen, then they try to change things. And, you know, maybe you're more secure about what you're doing than they are. And then it becomes a lot of questions asked left and right. And then the vision gets lost along the way and everybody's unhappy with the end result. Whereas if you can just shoot what you need, maybe, maybe nobody's happy with it anyway. But at least you've taken your, um, your vision all the way through. And if you're putting in the money... Then you might as well, you know, get your get the your same. control back. So I think that's why people are shooting in film and in photography. And I think the the but f- for film and in video, it's always been that you could watch over a, a, um, what's it called a like a screen a screen somewhere. So I think that there's there's always been less control because there was always a director somewhere that wasn't on the camera that he had to be able to see what was going on. Yeah. So I mean, not always, but I mean, the last sixty years, there's always been so that kind of control. But it's a bit different. But anyway, so that's that's the game. So you let's go back to the storyline. Then you make um, you make your first film. So yeah, no. like while I was doing the second course, we actually like go like a little bit quicker now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I finished the course. Uh, one of my teachers was uh, worked for um, an e-learning like uh, company. Yeah. Really, like totally something I would never have thought of, like even like going for an interview for, you know? Right. And he was like, uh, he saw I was pretty, pretty decent in a lot of stuff. He yeah. Like, okay, look, I have a, um, you can come and do the work experience with me and then we'll see if you, if you want to keep on going. And, um, I was doing flash animation and a little bit of editing, not too much mm-hmm. and illustration. And right. we worked on a project that was for, uh, teenage immigrants to help them learn Italian. Okay, sick. So it was for you. It was for me. <laughs> it was actually for me. <laughs> so I was already I, I already had a job. These immigrants come and steal our jobs. <laughs> Fantastic. So that actually I figured out like a year ago that that won an award for, All for right. something. I, I, I think for um, like best social um, project. C, yeah, like yeah. CD project or something like that. CD, um, best social. Yeah, they don't even exist anymore. It's incredible. It's like Stone and, Age stuff. Um, yeah, I stayed there for six months, and then it was like re- it just got really boring at a certain point. Um, so I left. I, I like quit, 
but just before quitting, like another um, like a fellow student of mine was like, yeah, you should come in. We're looking for editors um, in the studio, and they do like TV, and they did um, uh, like car and bike reviews. All right. So I was like, okay, two whatever. things that you're really interested in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like no interest whatsoever, so I like went there, did the inter- interview. They got they they hired me, and I just started doing broadcast stuff, which is like really cool. So I would do the second shift, and uh, it was like outside Milan. So if I missed the last train, second shift started at started at six six thirty and ended at eleven thirty at night, which is fantastic for you. Yeah, I messed up my whole like existence because I would like I would sleep all day, pretty much like now. I would yeah. sleep all day, and then it, it's just like uh, it was like crappy. It's like work; your whole day is messed up, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't see friends because like we also we'd have like mixed up hours and stuff. Yeah, of course. But um, it was really cool because I started working with uh, journalists that would do. You had to do the um, the voiceover, so you had to like record the voiceover, and if it wasn't working, you had to figure out like cables and stuff. Then you had to. Uh, it was like all done with um, like uh, RGB cables and. Editing software that I've never heard of like since, and I never heard of, of like Speed Razor and Velocity Q and like just like crazy stuff. But it, we had to edit really quickly, so like you got into it, and then you, we had to put the um, uh, the edits on the masters on like better like better tapes. Yeah. So that you had to like figure out how to do the time code, and you know you to, if there was a drop frame and like nick 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 all this like nerdy stuff. But like, yeah, but it's like school, you know. Like yeah, you're it's really like learning how to do things. Like and it's like you're learning also how to like. If you did like a, so it was very technical, but you could uh, still do some creative stuff. Like you could choose the music, you can choose like how quickly you do cuts, and then I did that for two years, and then um, eventually quit because it was getting really stressful. Mm-hmm. Like the guys, like the bosses, were starting to get a little bit too like on my case and stuff, and the workload tripled and the pay was still the same and right, so I was like okay that, so that's I, usually the, the right time to just go yeah. and cheers everybody thank you very much I just like straight up quit and um, in between all this I was like skating during the day and then going there like all sweaty and like yeah. always late always late you're by yourself anyway you know, and anything sweet and then uh, yeah I was by myself anyway and it was yeah. like outside you Milan you could be like, as stinky as you wanted yeah it's fine because I go to the bathroom, the Portuguese, like a, the yeah. Portuguese shower. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like without the O, it's I, just like with water and stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh, so even a Portuguese shower. No, just like just whatever. Sorry, Portuguese people. Yeah. We love you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like called a Portuguese shower in South Africa, and then like in Italy, it's called like a Mexican shower. I guess so. Okay. It's all like each one has it their own way of saying it. But uh, yeah, I, I eventually, I eventually snapped, but like. I didn't have a, ba- a plan B. I was still okay. living um, at home, like with, with mom, um, so I didn't like, really feel pressure to find a job straight away. And um, after that, like a couple of months without, like, I was just doing random stuff, random free- freelance work with, like, winging it. Like I had no idea. I did an edit in After Effects and just like all, all weird stuff. Like I didn't have a computer to work on. Like that was decent. So just. And at that time, you needed a, like a heavy computer to do yeah, video it, production. It was madness. Yeah. So just like really weird, odd jobs. And then a friend of mine who's a director just like said, you know, uh, Nickelodeon Italy is looking for a freelance editor. Like, you should go. I was like, okay, cool. And I went. I did like the weirdest like interview ever. We were eating hamburgers and just like in the street, like sitting on the sidewalk and stuff. And they're like, okay, you're... You're hired. Yeah. And my, my friend, he skates, like the director, and Daniele Zanaro, he skates. And he was like, you know, the, it's between you and a BMXer, but you're a skater. <laughs> so you should go. And I'm like, I'm going to push you. And I was like, okay, cool. And then uh, thanks to him, like I started like my do, whole... Do you know what happened to the BMXer? No, nobody cares about nobody BMX. Nobody cares. No one really cares about BMX. Is it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a family feud. He's the guy who stole your bike. Probably. Could probably. Be. <laughs> but I still see it around. I do. Yeah. Every now and then. <laughs> Fantastic. But um, yeah. Uh, that And that eventually I started out as a freelance video editor with all like the experience from the, um, the car review place. 
and then I always saw editing as a strictly technical field. Like mm -hmm. someone tells you what to do and you do it. Right. That's pretty much. So uh, maybe that's why I like, also have like that kind of workflow sometimes. Like you need like to change something, just yeah, tell just me like who cares. What do you want? Right? Um, I'm, try I'm trying to change that. Like I'm trying to get more into like explaining why we did certain things. And why I did certain cuts. Yeah, but well, that, that's that, that comes afterwards. That I comes guess. afterwards. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. But at the beginning, like when you're starting out, like if you don't know, you you need to just follow instructions. Yeah. And it's also easier because, like, you okay, I'm here. Just tell me what to do. Yeah. And uh, and you do it, and like if you do it quickly, people are happy. Like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Quickly, yeah. quietly, and like not annoyingly, not, not too expensive. Exactly. And just like <laughs> fantastic. And I did that for like about. Two two years and then eventually they gave me a contract and then eventually they, they were going to like move the whole creative department to to Paris and I didn't want to do that but like in that time uh, in MTV like uh, one of the the video edit, like the senior video editors like quit because she wanted to do like directing all right so a space opened up and they're like okay if you don't want to go we have the space that's open I was like. Whew. You know, nice. Because I didn't realize I was basically quitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you don't go, you know? Yeah. So I was like, it's totally like so many decisions I've made have been like that, like not really knowing. Just lucky. Just lucky. <laughs> and then I just like, yeah, I ended up just people talking, like um, my colleagues taught me how to, like, how to write a script, how to write a promo, what you need to do. Then I would like look at a lot of videos mm -hmm. of like how to do promos and, um, like I, I like watching movies, but I started getting into more like why? Yeah, like like videos on Vimeo, like of, of who really knows how to do editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like analysis of a scene and analysis of um, of uh, of an editor and like all this like really technical stuff. And a lot of this is um, because a, a colleague at MTV, like uh, Lu uh, Luca Grandini, is a really mm -hmm. good editor. Like kind of taught me that stuff. You're like, you, right. know, you know, you're not really just like a monkey who's doing like, you know, cuts and exports. You, you have a lot of say in what's coming out of the computer, you know? Yeah, okay. So, um, um, like slowly but surely, and then like, that's pretty much DIY. That's how I got into podcasts, and like watching and listening to podcasts as well. Like, like a lot of information. I didn't read books. Yeah, you read the same book. For, I read I think, the same book for like, years. Yeah. Or something like that. Needful things. And I just like open up a page, like randomly, and just like start <laughs> from there. And then like the next day, I'd open up. It's, it's incredible. We came out of the same womb. Yeah, like I, I, I used to devour books. I do not, I don't have much time to read now, but I, I started again. But uh, like I would go through them like, like nothing, like cereal. Yeah, I just and you're just like needful things. I would get so pissed off. I just look at you, just like, and you're like, what the fuck? Why didn't you just read another book? Like, I don't care. So I don't boring. Read <laughs> like, if I just find it like so, I'm, I'm visual. I need to like, yeah. I need either audio or, or video, like to keep me interested. And it's like, I would, I, I've, I've started like reading books. Like, yeah, well, big, books are visual because you aren't using your eyes to. Yeah, like, but it's not like you know, visually stimulated. You're like looking at a, you're looking at text. Yeah. You can't say. I mean, like a comic book is visual. Okay. Yeah, you, know, you have drawings and stuff. Yeah, I look Kaboom. at the pictures. I don't Bang, know. crash, exactly. snickety snick. <laughs> snick. <laughs> snicked, Wolverine, sick. So that brings us up to now, basically. So you got through there, and in the meantime, you started a skate company, sort of. Yeah. So in two thousand and eight, uh, like the skate scene in Italy is very weird. Um, it's uh, just like nothing, it doesn't really work. Like no one yeah. gets money. And um, because it's pretty much like... like just Italian. guys having fun. Yeah, it's like Italians are like more like that. It's just like more into the lifestyle and more into having fun rather than Making the business, business side yeah. of it, you know? And so there wasn't like a real good skate shop in Milan that was supporting us. And we we're just looking, looking at each other like, what are we going to do, you know? And uh, I'm, not, I'm sick of paying like full price for boards and you know, all that stuff because the skaters are cheap. So we decided just to, like me, um, Diego Garcia Dominguez and Andrea Cinizelli, like three, three guys that skated together, were like, okay, 
let's start a company. Let's just make our own boards. Right. Um, but in order to make your own boards, you had to have a name because, like, you had to – like, the guys who made them wanted a name. So we're like, okay, we might as well, like, just put in work and trying to find something really cool. And then we're, like, there for weeks and just, like, stressing over a name. And we wanted something – that was internationally easy to say, right. but kept like Italian like roots to it. Okay. But at the same time was like, wasn't directly connected to skateboarding. Okay. Okay. So it was just like really difficult to find out. And then we were listening to a Raekwon song and um, like, I, I think, I can't remember which song it was, but it was like a Wu-Tang song where Raekwon, the chef, did a, a track and they're like, Raekwon, the chef. And we, we looked, it was me and Diego, and we look at we look at each other, I'm like, Chef. And he was like, Yeah, chef sounds like sick, you know, it's yeah, everything like it's awesome. You know, like the chef is like the best chefs are Italian and it's easy to say. Wow, that's debatable. It's not debatable. <laughs> <laughs> um, no nah, man, like the best like cuisine. Well, it depends on yeah, the best cuisine I would say. Like I mean well, it's generally best. like generally Italians are known for like their like yeah, chefs, food. Yeah, it's perfect. Food. I mean, no, no, it's a good, it's a great name. So it's just, don't, don't read too much into it. No, nah, well, well, well. <laughs> and then it was easy to say four letters. Like, yeah, it looked good. Um, it's also French. It's also French, but it's like more. It's not considered it's French. French. I mean, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you it's use chef, yeah, like, everything is everywhere. And then, um, so we hit up. We called Andrea Chinizelli Chisco straight away. And we're right. like, yeah, dude. We, draw something. No, we were just like, uh, hey, we thought about this name. What do you think? Like, chef. He's like, I love it. I also thought of that name at the same time. So we were like, oh, shit. Okay, cool. So let's do it. And we just started making. Like, he's um, uh, a stylist, a yeah. designer. So he was like, you really knew how to make clothing. So and he's somebody we should get on this podcast. He is definitely someone you should get on the podcast. He's like really, he, he's like a rapper. He's done everything. Fantastic. And I think he works, I don't know who he works for now, but he, I do he works know for Sergio Tacchini. He works for Sergio Tacchini, but I know, he, I, I've taken a picture of the guy, I posted it yesterday, but I can't remember his name right now. Super cool designer, British guy. Um, not Neil. Anyway, it'll come to me. Yeah, you got to get him on, the, on here. He's like yeah, really yeah. interesting and, um, and really good. Like he, Neil Barrett. Neil, Neil Barrett. Barrett, super super cool guy, really really good, like amazing designer. Yeah, and, he, and um, he's been working maybe a year now. He's been mm -hmm. working for them for a year, but um, yeah, he's done some crazy Sergio Tacchini designs and like but he still does both of them, no? I think no, no, just no, uh, just, just the one. one. He he quit. He changed jobs. Right. So like he would be our um, like the fashion department pretty much, right. and Diego would be like. The um, creative director, I guess. Okay. Because he like he had like a vision. He always has like knows what's going to be the trend. Yeah, he, he's like super. He's like the the trend finder. He's yeah, like just the he, trend finder. He yeah. just knows shit, doesn't yeah. he? It's insane. And How does know, he do that? I don't know. Just like it's because he doesn't seem like he spends much time on a computer either. No, he doesn't. He it's, just it's knows really stuff. A, like a miracle if he knows how to spell. Like at at that time. He was having trouble with Messenger. Like, right, no. exactly. So I don't know how he get, like how his it's fingers possible. always on the pulse. He's always been into fashion. Yeah, and, and, and but where does he get his information from? The stars. The stars. <laughs> Just like looking it's at stuff. He's really observative. Yeah, yeah. And then um, like he would really break my balls in the edits as well, like frame by. Yeah, frame. he's very like uh, like on point. Yeah. Like he know like he's like oh this isn't quite right. I remember mm -hmm. when I did the one and only shoot that we've done together. For uh, skating, uh, geez, he would be busting my balls. He's like, no, we can't use this picture because look at the foot; it's like one degree out of the yeah, board. It's very, like, no, no, no. And this picture, I was like, come on, dude, these are amazing pictures. Like, no, 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 none of these are good. Fuck it, we're not going to use any of these. And until yeah. he got to the one, and it's like, this is the one I really like. This one, and that was it. Like, super stoked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's really specific. Yeah, I'm so, not, uh, and I'm precise. But um, and then I would be like the, I'd just be like content. Yeah, production. pretty much like uh, ideas and content, and and that's become pretty much what it, what I went into afterwards. Mm -mm -mm. Like I always staying in MTV, but I would like I'd learn something in the editing room, or like you know, yeah, and then try and bring that into the scale, like into the chef project, right? And, and experiment there, experiment there, and then vice versa. I would like learn something. Oh, I saw this, and I tried to do this cut, 
and this edit with this music, and then right. oh, I should try that here as well. So it's just been like um, cross pollination. Yeah, cross pollination of uh, of ideas and just like experimenting. And I've keep I keep on doing that now. Yeah, but that's the nice thing about having like various projects going on is that they live off each other. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And now we uh, this year we're going to be doing our tenth and tenth uh, anniversary. Ten, Ten years, years already, yeah. of Chef. That's crazy. And we've just had like a whole lot of changes and we should yeah. do it yeah we should we, we should actually we should do it'd be really cool video cool, production man. that's us that's us on the hour mm -mm. is that one hour that's one hour that actually went pretty good I was expecting a little bit more sweat I'm fucking dying <laughs> I am actually next time I'm also going to wear a hat I think yeah. I think it makes it's a really good idea you see that's why you're the creative director and I just take pictures yeah, well, I'm not a creative director. I'm a creative manager. A creative manager, it's the same sort so This of is just because I have uh, really bad hair and yeah. I'm trying to represent a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Fantastic, man. Okay. So that's number one done. That's now I think we'll figure out how, because we've gone slightly over. I think we can it up. Like push rec now. I think we're warmed up. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. We didn't warm up. <laughs> cool, then. Number one done. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. Thanks. I think that was really good. Yeah, not bad. What do you think? Sick. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thumbs up from the girlfriend in the corner who spent an hour listening to your life story. Yeah, and she doesn't speak English. So, so I'm sure English? that something's good there. <laughs> Yay. Cool. cool, guys. So this is us. I guess we have to figure out a way to sign off, I'd say. So just like... Uh, just like sign off. Sign off. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.